They were built to serve, to speed up production, to take on the jobs too dangerous for humans. But sometimes, they malfunction. And when they do, the consequences can be fatal. These are the true stories of robotic malfunctions that ended in tragedy. I always quack back. Before we begin, I need to make one thing clear. I'm not a robot. I'm an animatronic. And while at first glance they might seem the same, they're not. An animatronic is designed to perform specific predictable movements. It doesn't think. It doesn't respond. It simply executes a fixed sequence to simulate life. Like the characters from the Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland. Or the bears in Country Bear Jamboree. Even I follow that same principle. I repeat what I was programmed to do. A robot, on the other hand, can receive information, process it, and act based on what it detects. For example, in Ford or Volkswagen factories, robotic arms assemble vehicles with a precision no human could match. In hospitals, surgical robots make incisions accurate to the millimeter. And in labs like Boston Dynamics, machines have been created that can walk, run, maintain balance, even react to their surroundings with agility that seems impossible. The key difference is this. Robots can make decisions. And when a system built to operate with power, speed, and autonomy fails, the consequences can be serious. And in some cases, fatal. Like in our first case. Case 1. Robert Williams. The first person killed by a robot. 1979. Location. Flat Rock, Michigan. Robert Williams was just 25. Bright, focused, the kind of young man who showed up, worked hard, and didn't ask for much. That day, it was supposed to be like any other. Inside the foundry, a five-story automated storage system loomed. Built by Litton Industries, it was state-of-the-art, at least on paper. It moved heavy castings with mechanical precision, giant robotic arms sweeping parts from shelf to shelf. But machines don't panic, and they don't warn you when they start to get things wrong. On that day, the system began to misread its inventory, sending back false data. So they sent Robert up. Manual check, third level. He climbed into the structure to count what the machine could not. What he didn't know was that the robot was still active, still moving, still blind. There was no sound, no flashing lights, just a sudden, brutal impact. A one-ton transfer vehicle slamming into him, crushing him against a steel support beam. Robert died instantly, and no one knew. It took 30 minutes before someone found his body. No alarm, no shutdown, because the robot had no idea it had just taken a life. It wasn't built to. Later, investigators traced the tragedy back to a chilling set of oversights. No sensors to detect a human presence. No emergency override in case of malfunction and a blind confidence that the future would look out for us. Robert's family took the matter to court, accusing the system's designers of negligence. In 1983, a jury agreed. They were awarded $10 million, later raised to $15 million, one of the largest wrongful death verdicts in Michigan at the time. But numbers can't fill a chair at the dinner table. They can't replace the sound of a voice, or the plans that never got to unfold. Robert became something more than a statistic. He became a cautionary tale, a name etched into the history of automation, a reminder that safety isn't a suggestion, it's a requirement. And yet, just two years later, half a world away, it happened again. If you've been enjoying the videos, consider becoming a member. It's a small way to support the channel, but it makes a big difference in helping us keep creating more stories each week. Case two, the technician and the cage that forgot to lock. Some tragedies unfold not because machines malfunction, but because they never knew you were there to begin with. Location, Kawasaki Heavy Industries, Akashi, Japan. Kenji Arata was 37, a veteran technician, quietly skilled, deeply precise. The kind of man who knew his machines the way a pilot knows turbulence. Expected, manageable, part of the job. In 1981, something glitched. A robot in the line wasn't responding as it should. Kenji stepped in to fix it. That was his role. Standard protocol said shut it all down. Main power, auxiliary lines, total lockout. But Kenji trusted the safety switch, believed it was enough. It wasn't. 
As he crossed the threshold into the robot's cage, a signal misfired. Or maybe it didn't misfire at all. Maybe the robot just did exactly what it was built to do, move. But it didn't see him, didn't hesitate, didn't recognize that a human being was in its space. In a split second, the machine lunged, and Kenji was forced back into an active mechanical unit. There was no scream loud enough, no reflex fast enough. He was crushed before help could even reach the door. The aftermath was chilling. What went wrong? The robot's safety system could be bypassed with ease. No motion sensors, no human detection fall safes, and a fundamental flaw. It was never taught how to distinguish a person from a part. Kenji Yurata became the first person in Japan to be killed by a robot. And unlike the silent factory floor, the media made noise. The incident triggered a national reckoning. Companies scrambled to overhaul safety protocols. Japan set new standards, some of which still shape global robotics policy today. But none of it changed the ending for Kenji. Case 3. The arm that didn't hesitate. We like to believe that newer means safer. That modern machines are smarter, more obedient, less dangerous. But sometimes, all it takes is one oversight. And the old story plays out again, just in sharper resolution. Location. Volkswagen Factory. Bonital, Germany. It was 2015. A clean, controlled facility. The kind of place where humans and robots coexist, but never truly cross paths. Until they do. The victim was just 21. A young contractor brought in to help install a new robotic assembly unit. He followed the checklist. He stayed where he was supposed to stay. He didn't break protocol. But the robot did. Without warning. It powered up. And in that instant, everything changed. It reached out, grabbed him, and slammed him against a metal surface with a force no human body could withstand. His team rushed in, desperate to reverse what had already begun. But by the time he reached the hospital, the damage was fatal. So, what went wrong? Early reports pointed to a breakdown in the safety perimeter. The robot may have been operating under an altered zone map. Its spatial boundaries misconfigured during the setup. It didn't detect a threat, because it wasn't programmed to. It did exactly what it was told, and that's what killed him. Volkswagen was quick to clarify. The robot wasn't autonomous. It didn't choose to act. It simply followed instructions. But that raised a chilling question, one with no clear answer. If a machine follows flawed commands to deadly precision, where does the blame land? Is it the programmer? The integrator? The machine itself? The tragedy made headlines around the world, not just because of what happened, but because of how familiar it felt. A predictable robot. A controlled space. A task that should have been routine. And still, another life taken. Yet what makes this case haunting isn't just the loss. It's that this incident is considered simple, clean cut, understandable. Because next, the machine won't be bolted in place. Case 4. The package the system never questioned. What happens when a machine doesn't know you're human because it was never taught to ask? Location. Logistics Center. South Gyeongsang Province, South Korea. It happened in 2023. A spotless humming warehouse where automation ruled. Where packages moved by clockwork. Guided by software, sensors, and steel. The man was a technician in his 40s. He wasn't new. He'd helped build the very system he was now inspecting. This was routine, nothing unusual. Just another checkup in a world built to run on precision. But something didn't see him. A robot designed for crate handling, locked on. It scanned the environment, detected mass, shape, movement. The parameters matched. And so, it grabbed him. No hesitation, no anomaly detected. Just arms closing around a load, lifting it smoothly and slamming it down onto the conveyor, like any other box. He was still alive when responders arrived, unconscious, broken. He died later in the hospital. What went wrong? The robot wasn't faulty. It was functioning exactly as programmed. It recognized objects by a set of physical characteristics, weight, size, structure. He matched them. That was all that needed. No thermal scan, no heartbeat detection. No pause for something that moved differently, breathed differently, was different. Because in that warehouse, humanity wasn't part of the equation. Just throughput, speed, 
efficiency, and the man who helped design the system was reduced to a data point, classified not as an error, but as cargo. The response was swift. Government inquiries, company pledges to retrain AI, upgraded protocols, but the root truth lingered. The machine didn't mistake him for a person. It never considered the possibility. He fit the parameters, so it acted. And that's the danger of indifferent machines. They don't rage. They don't rebel. They simply don't care. Because sometimes it's not a glitch. It's the absence of recognition. And that might be the most terrifying design flaw of all. Case 5. The procedure that didn't pause. When machines are trained to perform with absolute focus, what happens when something interrupts that focus? Location. Private medical facility. Undisclosed location. United States. The operating room was state-of-the-art. Sterile. Silent. Except for the faint hum of robotic limbs in motion. It was a procedure the system had done dozens of times. Precise. Minimally invasive. Handled by a surgical robot under human supervision. Until someone stepped too close. The technician wasn't new. He understood the rules. But in that moment, during a brief handoff of equipment, he crossed into the robot's active field. And the robot didn't stop. It didn't reassess, didn't issue a warning. Because from its point of view, there was no anomaly, just the continuation of movement. Its arm shifted, retracting a tool at high speed. Direct contact. There was a sudden impact, a flurry of alarms, and then blood on the floor that wasn't from the patient. The technician collapsed. Massive internal injuries. He was rushed to emergency care, but the trauma was irreversible. He died within the hour. What failed? This wasn't an assembly line. This was medicine. A controlled interface between human and machine. But the robot's movement pathways weren't programmed to distinguish between a patient and the passing human. Its attention was singular. The target inside the body. Anything outside that narrow band was invisible. The aftermath was subdued, tucked behind NDAs and internal reviews. The hospital called it a tragic accident. The manufacturer cited protocol violations. But behind closed doors, a larger question simmered. When we give machines life-saving responsibilities, what happens when the life at risk isn't the patient? What happens when a machine has no instinct to look up? Because the deeper we integrate these systems into spaces where lives hang in the balance, the more fragile that balance becomes. These weren't killer robots from horror movies. They were real and they did exactly what they were told, which begs the question, as robots become smarter, faster, and more present in our lives, are we getting safer or just better at pretending we're still in control? As tradition goes, if you made it all the way to the end, comment last of the real ones, so we can give you a shout out in our end screen. You, the real ones, are the best part of this channel. We love you.